Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Glenn and this is my channel Taylor Tries where I try new things and I try to teach you new things and today I'm going to teach you how to do Mills Mess. In this tutorial, I'm gonna break down the trick step by step, as well as give you some tips and advice for things that you might be doing wrong. There's also an extended version of this tutorial available exclusively for members of my Otter Club over on Patreon. That includes some additional content covering some cool stylistic choices that you might make with Mills Mess. If you wanna join the Otter Club, you can get immediate access to that in addition to all sorts of other exclusive content and goods. So go check that out, there's a link in the description. For those of you who are already a member of the Otter Club, Thank you so much. You make it possible for me to keep making this content for everybody. All right, back to the pattern. Mills Mess is an awesome trick. It is a staple for every juggler. And it's also the first time that a lot of jugglers get this feeling in their brain where it starts to hurt really bad because it's confusing and like a puzzle. It's awesome. Why is it called Mills Mess? Well, it's named after a juggler named Steve Mills who is credited with discovering the trick back in the 70s. Since then, it has risen to become one of the most popular tricks and for good reason, it's awesome. Let's take a look at what's actually happening in Mills Mess. Mills Mess is a trick consisting of outside throws where the balls almost look like they're chasing each other creating a sort of figure eight-like pattern. I've heard Mills Mess described in a bunch of different ways. Some people say it's a reverse cascade with underhand throws. Some people describe it as the trick windmill going back and forth. No matter how you describe it, what it comes down to is Mills Mess is composed of three distinct throws. And this is true no matter how many juggling balls you have. Four ball mills mess is the same way. Five ball, six ball mills, they all have these same three throws. There is a crossed arm over the top throw, an uncrossed reverse throw, and an underarm throw. So we've got one, two, three. And then it just repeats on the other side. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, don't worry, we're gonna break those throws down, but just so you kind of have an idea of what's going on. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that this trick is technically a sight swap three. If you're not familiar with sight swap, basically all that means is that the balls are just going right, left, right, left, right, left, like a normal juggling pattern. It's just that you're throwing them differently, but it's still right, left, right, left. Remember that. It'll come in handy when we get going. As always, before we jump into how to do Mills Mess, you have to know what you should already know. Yeah. Luckily, you don't have to know a lot of tricks to do Mills Mess, but the ones that I do recommend, obviously, are the three ball cascade. I also recommend that you know the reverse cascade, which I cover in another tutorial. There's a link in the description on that. Other than that, I do recommend learning the rest of the tricks that I have in that beginner tutorial because it will get you comfortable with just throwing balls in a different way than you're used to. If you're not already familiar with some of those other tricks, you may not be fully ready to jump into Mills Mess yet. Go learn those tricks and then you can come back. If you're feeling ready, let's get messy. You know I had to make that joke somewhere. We got it out of the way. Let's, let's keep going. So as I mentioned before, there are three distinct throws in the Mills Mess pattern. I want to teach you how to do each one separately before we put them all together. So the first one, I want you to start with your arms crossed, but have one ball on the top hand. From here, you're going to want to throw the ball up and have it end in the center of your body. This will be true for every throw that we work on. Every one of them should end in the center of your body. That's how you get Mills Mess to look good. As this ball is in the air, we're going to uncross our arms and switch so that the other hand ends on top and catches that ball. Then you'll do it on the other side. We throw it up, we uncross, we cross again and catch it on top with the other hand. Practice this a few times. Now, when you do this, you want the ball to create a figure eight pattern. So every ball that we throw, we're gonna want to mimic that figure eight path, which is why we have them end in the center of our body. So work on this back and forth, try to get it smooth and comfortable. This is exactly what Mills Mess will feel like. We're just gonna add two more balls. Okay, so that is throw number one. Now let's work on throw number two. Throw number two is gonna start from your hands open, just like you would a normal juggling pattern. And you're gonna throw a reverse cascade type throw towards the center of your body. When you do that, you're gonna cross this arm over the top of the other arm, catch that ball with the hand underneath. Then we're going to uncross and do the same thing back. Okay. 
Again, remember that figure eight trail. Try to follow that. Practice this over and over again until you feel pretty comfortable with this motion. That is throw number two. Let's do throw number three. Throw number three is really basic. It's just an under the arm throw. I refer to this ball often as the U ball because it tends to create a sort of U type shape when people are doing it slightly incorrectly. <laughs> so we start with our hands open and we're gonna cross the ball under the other arm and throw it up and then uncross and catch. So what you might have a tendency to do with this is throw the ball straight up. This is why I call it the U ball because people do it in a way that creates a U. This is fine when you're learning. It's not a big deal, but it's not gonna make the trick look as good as it can. What I encourage you to do instead is focus on bringing that ball in a little bit when you throw it so that it ends in the center of your body. Once you're feeling good with that third throw, let's start putting them together. All right, we've upgraded to two balls. Let's combine throws one and two. So we're gonna start with our arms crossed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with one, which was that over the top cross arm throw. And then we're gonna uncross immediately and throw number two. Then we're gonna catch ball number one and catch ball number two down in that bottom hand. So whichever hand you started with on top should end on bottom. One, two, one, two, one, two. You have to practice this on both sides. Mills Mess is a two-sided trick. Don't just do this and then do it again. No, both sides. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Try to keep in mind aiming the balls for the center of your body. Catch the ball in the center of your body and sort of swoop it down to get ready for the next throw. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Notice that the balls aren't switching position. When I throw throw number one, it is always the pink ball. When I throw throw number two, it's always the green ball. This is the joy of Mills Mess. The throws always are distinct. They're always the same throws. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Pink, green, pink, green, pink, green, pink, green. This might take a little getting used to, but work on it until you have it solid. It's really gonna help you with the third ball. Once you're feeling good with that, let's pick up ball number three. So we're gonna start with two balls on top and you're gonna throw the first two throws just like normal. One, two, but then right after you catch that first ball, you're gonna throw the next ball underneath. So it should go one, two, three. One, two, three. When you catch that third ball, I want you to catch it in the hand that's on top. Don't catch it in the hand that's underneath. That's gonna be tempting to do, but since this is gonna be the next ball you're gonna throw, I want you to catch it in that hand, just to get used to that muscle memory. So we're here, one, two, three, catch. One, two, three, catch. From here, you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So one, two, three, catch. 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 Another helpful way to think of those three throws is cross, open, under. Cross, open, under. Cross, open, under. All right, I had to move the camera because of the sun's setting. That's how long I've been out here. Once you're feeling comfortable with each side independently, you can combine the two without stopping. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, let's go over some things that you might be having a hard time with or doing incorrectly. Mills Mess is a very fluid visual trick. Even though that's the case, I see a lot of people that do this trick in a very choppy, kind of ugly way. You might 
be doing it like this, where your throws are going all over the place and there's no cohesive pattern. Every ball, regardless of where it's being thrown from, should look like a figure eight. It should follow that pattern. So really emphasize having every ball come from the outside and land right in the middle of your body. That's the goal of Mills Mess. The other thing you might be doing is making that underhand throw create a U shape. Notice how throws one and two are going in that arced pattern, but then the third one's going straight up. This is super common. It's really hard to get that throw to come in if you're not used to it, but focus on arcing that underhand throw towards the middle of your body so that it ends in the same place as the other two. Lastly, a super common mistake is to throw ball number two on the inside of ball number one rather than making it a reverse cascade throw. Watch the green ball. Notice how it's going on the inside. Every ball that you throw in Mills Mesh should be coming from the outside of the other ball. I see this all the time. A lot of people think they're doing Mills Mess, but they're actually doing this weird in-between hybrid. If this is something that you do, I recommend breaking it down again with two balls. When you're going one, two, make sure that two is on the outside of one. So don't go one, two. No, one, two. Yes. All right, that concludes all of the stuff in this awesome tutorial. Unless you are a member of my Otter Club over on Patreon, there will be an additional section right where this is. It will go right here. So if you're not already a patron, you can go sign up. There's a link in the description. Thank you again to everyone who supports me. So that is Mills Mess. It is a hard one. It's gonna make your brain hurt. It's kind of a weird puzzle. I really hope this tutorial helped you. I hope you could successfully do Mills Mess after a little bit of practice. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer them. And if you did learn the trick or you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribing so that you can be notified when I make more tutorials. I think that's all I have to say. Okay, happy messing and I'll see you next time. Oh, there's a gopher. There's a gopher on the ground. Ah, I wish I could show you. <laughs> it's exciting. Hi. Oh, I scared him. You wanna learn Mills Mess too? I can teach you. I can teach anybody. <laughs>